Hello, how are you doing? Uh, it's another great day that uh, we're here. And um, I'll be speaking today about a very, very important topic. Uh, a very important topic, uh, which is um, something that uh, people have always been asking about. And they always wonder and ask themselves, what was wrong with the tree of knowledge <laughs> of uh, good and evil in the Garden of Eden. Have you ever asked yourself this question? What, what was really wrong with this tree? Why is it that um, uh, Adam and Eve, uh, uh, God says that it was bad what they did and uh, they actually had to die? What was really wrong with this tree? And today that is what we'll be debunking, we'll be going through to understand uh, what happened with this tree and uh, what could have been avoided, you see. And um, I think it will be really a blessing. I'm also trying to post the same on uh, a Facebook. Uh, let me see. Uh, on Facebook, if you follow me on Facebook, Keith Mwoki, I have a Facebook page and also a Facebook uh, account. You can also follow me there as well as on uh, YouTube. And of course, you can uh, subscribe and you can always be uh, learning this together all through. So now, having said that, today we want to know, there was a big difference between the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And uh, this one thing was done because uh, God, um, he does not, he's not a God of, uh, I want to just give people, make people robots. No, God did not want to make people robots. He actually did this intentionally because uh, he's a God of plan and he's not a God who is going to just uh, force things into people and tell them, uh, do whatever I want by fire, by thunder. No, it doesn't work like that. God is a God of order, okay? God is a God of order. And um, he's also a God who is loving and uh, he created us for a purpose. He wanted us to be able to learn and be able to do according to his will. So he did not create something which will just follow him like a robot, the way people think. Think about it, if you create uh, uh, someone and then that person is just following like a robot, when you press this button, he comes. When you press that button, he goes. No, that, that was not uh, what God intent, intended. So now, having said this, uh, we understand that um, in Genesis 1 verses 12, uh, there's something called the tree yielding fruit. Okay, now I want us to go there so that uh, this can form some basis of exactly uh, what you're talking about. Genesis 1 12, it says, uh, it says, and the earth brought, uh, brought forth grass and herb yielding seed, you see, herb yielding seed mm -hmm, after its kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself, you see, the tree, the seed was in itself after its kind, and God saw that it was good. Are you seeing this point? So God did something intentionally. He created these uh, 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 trees and then the seed of the tree was in itself. So now having seen that this seed is being passed to generation after another generation after another generation. And also we see in Genesis 2.9, uh, Genesis 2.9, uh, we see, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So the tree of good and evil was also there, and the tree of life was also there. Now you may ask yourself, God created these two kinds of trees. He says, one tree should be there, another one tree should be there. And he says, if you eat from the tree of life, you don't need to think about anything. I'll cater for all your stuff. You'll be there. I will, um, if it's what you will eat, I'll take care of it. If it's what uh, you, you will do, what, uh, you know, everything you will till, I will basically do everything for you if you choose the tree of life. But if you choose the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you're going to be on your own. Just think about uh, when a child uh, is, is just completed his uh, maybe high school education and you're just about to leave home, but uh, your father is still worried about you and he's telling you, uh, <laughs> my daughter, my son, 
Now I know you're 18 years. You you can be able to go out and do whatever you want. But I give you a choice here. You stay at home, okay? You study, going to school and come back home. I'll cater for everything, your house, your food, your everything. You don't need to think about anything. And uh, you go out from home, he will take care of yourself. Everything else you'll cater uh, for it. So that's exactly how God put this difference. And he said, now it's a free choice. I don't want just to create robots. I want you to choose for yourself. Follow me or follow yourself. Following yourself is basically wanting to believe in yourself instead of believing in God. You see, the whole aspect of salvation is all about belief. Who do you believe? Are you seeing the point? So it's really, really important to understand that. Now, God has given instructions. He has said there's a tree of life and the tree of knowledge on, uh, of good and evil. And uh we see some instructions that he's saying about these two trees, okay? Genesis 2, 16 to 17, it says, uh, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Every tree of the garden you can eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you will eat thereof, you will surely die. Are you seeing that? God is saying, the moment you will eat from this tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will die. So there must be something which was really wrong with this tree. There must be something which was really so bad and so pathetic that God said, when you eat from this tree, remember it's, it's in the Garden of Eden. When you eat from this tree, you will die. So this tree, it's like it's possessed with something or it's really bad or there's some poison inside it. That's why you will die. When you eat some poison, you will die. What is really wrong with this tree? We have to ask ourselves this question, okay? And then we see Satan deceiving them to eat from this tree. And uh, this one is building a picture so that I can be able to tell you exactly who, what was in this tree because there was something so weird which was in this tree. And unless you understand what was in the tree, you'll always be thinking, ah, they just ate a fruit. I think, why did God hate people eating a fruit? It's just a fruit, God. It's just the same way people say, it's just some sin. Why does God refuse people to do this? It's, uh, come on, I'm just enjoying nothing much. You know, sin is always very sweet. And Satan, he's very big deceiver, is a big deceiver. He deceives people to think that what they are taking is good, but actually in real sense, it's not good. Now, let's see. The serpent is deceiving them to eat of this uh, tree. Genesis 3, 1 to 6. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the, feast, uh, of the field, uh, which the Lord God had made. The serpent was, you know, wise and smart. And he said unto the woman, yeah, has God said you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? You see, the, the way Satan comes, he always comes with a question. You mean he said that was wrong? So that you can answer and you say, oh, yeah, I was told like this. And then he can hit you with another question. And that's why when Jesus was being tempted uh, by Satan in the wilderness, he did not start replying with carnal words and saying, no, you see, I can't eat, I, I, I can't just change this stone to, to, to bread because I don't feel like it. Or no, he just said, it is written. You reply with the word of God. And that's how you'll be able to finish Satan. Did he say you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it. Neither you shall touch it, lest you die. You see what Eve is saying? God has said, no, don't, don't, don't eat from that tree because you will die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. You see, this is the same, same lie which Satan has always been speaking even right now. And right now you're seeing people are trying to, you know, make themselves, uh, change themselves into some robots through, you know, what they're being, uh, getting injected in their bodies. And many, many people are just sitting there and they're saying, no, I trust these scientists. I trust these guys. I trust you know, the, the, I trust the knowledge of this world. I don't trust what the Bible is telling me. The Bible is telling me, don't take anything which is um, a filthy into yourself. But mm, the Bible is old fashioned. I, I think I need the new knowledge. Are you seeing this? 
exactly the same things which Satan was saying here. You shall not surely die, for God does know, listen to what he's saying, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil. You will change and you'll be powerful. You'll be like gods, okay, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, look at this point. The woman says the tree was good for food. So it means this tree was, was shining. It was shining. And, you know, this is what the Bible calls the last of the eyes. The three sins, they're already here in this, this one verse. The last of the eyes. The tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, you see. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Are you seeing that? She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it also to her husband with her and, she, and he did it. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, seeing the last of the eyes, and it was pleasant to the eyes, the last of the flesh, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, and the pride of life. Are you seeing the three things? The last of the eyes, last of the flesh, and the pride of life. Okay. Then he ate it and gave to the husband to eat. Are you seeing the point? So now Satan has deceived these guys. They have already eaten that tree. Now, why was the tree seemingly pleasant and desirable? What would have made this tree to seem so different that Adam and Eve, they refused to eat all those other trees from all those other trees. And they say, let's eat from this tree. Because, this is the answer, it is because Satan was in the tree. <laughs> he had possessed the tree because Satan, remember one thing about um, uh, Satan, Satan, they are spirits, okay? The devil and uh, whatever, it's demons, they are spirits. They don't have bodies and they have to possess things so that they can, you know, they can be. Here in the world, they have to possess things. And remember, Adam and Eve, they were on this world. So the only way Satan could be able to manifest himself is by possessing something. That's why we hear somebody is demon possessed. You see, you can be able to see. Have you ever heard people saying, eh, that house is really possessed. It's, it's like um, the TVs are falling by themselves. Things are doing. You see that the seats are moving. It's like some things are possessed in that house. So Satan can possess things. And Satan had possessed this tree he was in that tree so if you eat from that tree it would make you be able to eat a part of the seed of satan now you may say kate you're lying let me show you i'm not lying let's go to the book of ezekiel 31 and i will show you that satan had possessed that tree and he was actually the one there and when you eat from that tree you will actually eat the seed of satan and you will become like him this one is so profound. Just go to Ezekiel chapter 31 and uh, let's start from uh, verse 4. Okay, we can go down to verse 11. And you will see this tree was possessed by Satan. So when they ate, they actually ate the seed of Satan. And that's how what really happened. Now let's go to verse 4. It says, the waters made him great. Now he's talking about Satan here. Okay, the waters made him great. Now, listen to this uh, speech about Satan and tell me, does it seem to be a tree? The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with the rivers running about his plants and sent out her little rivers unto all trees of the field. You hearing this? Therefore, his height was exalted above all trees of the field and his boughs were made, multiplied and his branches became long because of the multitude of the waters when he shot forth. So he's like being exalted among all the trees in the garden. All falls of the heaven, this is the birds, all falls of the heaven made their nests in his boughs and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Are you seeing this? Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. His root, 
was by great water. So it means he had really matured and was looking so nice. And uh, you see uh, a plant which is planted by the rivers, it's always looking green and uh, happy and things like that, okay? Verse eight, uh, the cedars in the garden of God. Now garden of God is where? Eden, listen. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The far trees were not, were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches. Nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in beauty. You see, Satan, he was so beautiful in the garden of God, there is no other tree which looked like him. So he had possessed this tree. Literally, that tree was basically Satan. Just choose God or choose Satan. You know, Satan has possessed that tree. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches. You see what God is saying? I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden, okay? All the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. All the other trees, they envied this tree. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height and hast shot up his top among the thick boughs and his heart is filled in height, I have therefore delivered him into the land of the mighty, one of the heathen, that he surely deal, that he shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out of wickedness. Okay, so now look at that. Look at that and ask yourself. Why is God talking about this? Why is the Bible talking about Satan in a way as if he's a tree? Because Satan had possessed that tree. And the Bible continues and explains to us that something happened. Let's, let's look at verse 18 of Ezekiel 31, 18. To whom as thou dost like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden, okay, you, the, the Bible is saying you are really great in the garden of Eden, yet sh uh, shall thou be brought down with trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shall lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword and so forth. So now this one already gives us a picture that the one who was in this garden, it was basically uh, Satan himself. Satan was in this garden and he was the one who was deceiving who was showing himself as if he's so beautiful and so glittering so that Adam and Eve can go there and eat from that forbidden, uh, uh, that forbidden fruit in the tree, okay? Because when they ate that, they are basically eating the seed of Satan. Now, a tree usually produces a seed. The fruit is where the seed is in most of the trees. So when you eat that fruit, you're basically eating the seed the seed of the tree. So the seed of Satan, Satan was had possessed the tree. So now the fruits had the seed of Satan. So now when Adam and Eve, they ate of the fruit of that tree, they basically ate the seed of Satan. And uh, the Bible explains to us, okay? It explains to us that, look at uh, John 8, 44. Why, did, why does Jesus say these words? John 8, 44. John 8, 44, it says, uh, are ye of your father the devil? You are your father the devil, and the last of your father will you do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. You see, Jesus is saying, you are of your father the devil. So it means the seed the seed of lying, deceptions, murder, and everything, which was in Satan, you took that fruit and you ate it, and the seed got inside you, and you became like your father, the devil. So Adam and Eve, they got the seed of Satan when they ate that uh, fruit from that tree, the tree which was in the Garden of Eden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which was possessed by Satan, like you have seen in uh, Ezekiel 31 from verse 4. So now, are you seeing that? Jesus is saying, you're like your father, the devil, meaning what? They took that seed. So humans took the seed of Satan and started behaving like him. Have you ever realized 
You don't need to teach a child how to be evil. A child will naturally be evil. He'll start abusing other children, beating other children, stealing, doing all these things you don't teach a child. A child automatically learns these things. Okay? Because a child always follows the father. He has the traits of the father. And now Adam is our father. Before we get saved, we are of the image of Adam. Remember, in Genesis 5.3, it says, and Adam lived blah, blah, blah years, and he begat Seth, his, his son, in his own image and his own likeness. So if Adam was in the image uh, of Satan now, eh, with the seed of Satan, it means all his offspring, they are also with the image of Satan, the fallen image. They had the seed of Satan in them. Okay? Now, the Bible tells us very well in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs uh, 14, 12, Proverbs 14, 12, it tells us something here, 14, 12. It says, there is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Remember, Cain and Abel, they saw a certain way which seemed so right unto them. But what was happening with this? It was leading unto death. They thought this way is so beautiful. This way is so nice. If we do this and this and this, it will be so beautiful that we will eat this and we will enjoy. But that way, which seems so right, sometimes is not always the best thing. Not all things, like the saying goes, not, not all that glitters is gold. Some things that glitter, sometimes they're not really gold. They're not that beautiful as it may be. They, and uh, you remember Jesus, uh, when he died, the Bible says he was, he became our unleavened bread. He took our sins with us. And that's why he gave, God gave uh, the feasts that people should celebrate. And one of the feasts is called the feast of the unleavened bread. What is unleavened bread? A bread without yeast. Yeast is sweet. So that day we celebrate it. Okay. We celebrate it with eating bread, which is unleavened without leaven, meaning it does not have those sweeteners. Sin is sweet. And it's exactly the same way what they were seeing. They were seeing something really beautiful, really nice, and they got mixed up, okay? Now, God asks Adam and Eve if they ate of the tree. Now, look at this. Adam and Eve, they were not asked by God, did you eat of the fruit? God asked them, did you eat of the tree? Because from the tree is where we get the seed, and the seed is found in the fruit. Okay, now Genesis 3, 11 to 13, Genesis 3, 11 to 13, it says, and he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree? You see, God is insisting about the tree. Why? Because the tree is the source of the issue. The seed, it is a, it is a, a um, the seed, the, the fruit, it is a product of the tree. Okay. Whereof I commanded thee that should not eat. And the man said, the woman whom you gave to me, uh, to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, what is it that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. You see? So they started chasing words. Uh, you know, is this woman? No, is this man? This, uh, th this uh, serpent is one who deceived me and so forth. So it's all about a, a blame game. And that is, a, I believe, is the same thing which will be happening in the judge at the judgment that that time at the uh, great wine throne judgment when people will be judged by God. They'll start saying, "No, it's my pastor who told me this. No, pastor. No, it is my theological college which taught me this. And you, theological. No, I read this from a book, and this is what happened." And people will be chasing words and chasing words, and God. He's not after chasing words with people. Who told you, no, this one told me, no, that one told me, no. He'll just be asking one thing. Did you do my will? I told you to get saved, to get yourself from that seed of Satan and come into the seed of, uh, of God through faith. Because the Bible tells us the moment we believe, we become of the seed of Abraham, which was already sanctified and which was sanctified by faith. We become children of Abraham by faith. Now we are from the, we get out from the lineage of Satan. And now we become in the lineage which God already ordained. He chose, we become children of Abraham by faith. So God is always telling us that. So now sin has entered, but God has a redemption plan. 
Now, God is always a very merciful God. You see, Adam and Eve could have died then, then because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But what, why did Adam and Eve not die then, then? Because God showed them grace. What is grace? Grace is getting what you don't deserve. You deserve to die. But then God shows you grace. He tells you, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something which you're not even supposed to get it. And that's exactly what God did, okay? God did that. Now, God showed them grace and he did not kill them there and then. What did God do? Let's go to Genesis 3.21. Genesis 3.21. And to Adam and also to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothed them. So God, he killed an animal and made clothes out of skin and clothes them. Basically, it is a sign of clothing sin, you know. God killed an animal. So the first murder was done by God himself. He shed the blood of an innocent animal, which was not involved in these deceptions. A picture of how Jesus would come later on and die innocently for the sins of the world. Now, he's, he, he, he killed this animal and clothed them with the with the uh, skin of this animal, okay? So to represent an atonement. So God atoned for their sin at some point by using the blood of an animal. Are you seeing this point? So God shed that blood. Why? And it's because there had to be something which had to die because without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins according to the book of Hebrews. And this way, knowing that you have been in the seed of uh, Satan, and now God is purchasing you using the blood, then it means one day, one time he will do that. And that's why when Jesus came, he purchased us with his own blood. He purchased us with his own blood. Now, let's look what the Bible says in Acts 20, uh, 28. What does the Bible say here? Paul says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Okay, listen to this. Which he has purchased with his own blood. So we were purchased with the blood of Jesus. We were purchased with the blood of Jesus. Jesus is God. So meaning, after all this that we did, God had to find a plan to be able to redeem us because we already have the seed of Satan in us. And now we are supposed to die because we have already sinned and we have our father, the devil. We have already sinned. We are like Satan himself. We have eaten of his seed. Now we are supposed to die. But God says, no, I still love these people. Let me give them a way how they can be saved. And now he brings in Jesus Christ who died for the sins of all mankind. Okay. So that tree, that tree of good and evil, it was a picture, it was a picture of a curse, okay? It was a picture of a curse. Remember, God cast the earth, he cast so many things, he cast the serpent, and he said, no, you will be, uh, if he's man, you will toil, and the woman will give birth in pain, and this land you've been cast, and, the, and this will be, so that tree was a picture of a curse. The tree brought curse to, uh, to humanity and to the world. That tree, which was possessed by the enemy, possessed by Satan. So that tree was a picture of a curse. And we can see this in Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy uh, 21, uh, 22 to 23. It says this, 22 to 23. If a man, if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, you see, just like the way Adam did, if a man has committed a sin worthy of death and he to be put to death, he's to be put to death and thou, uh, and thou hang him on a tree, okay? You have to hang him on a tree. His body shall not remain all night upon the tree. Do you remember Jesus? He was hung on a tree, but his body did not remain all through in the, in the, in the, uh, on the tree. But thou shall in, any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is a cast of God. So the one who is hung on a tree is cast that thy land not be defiled, which the Lord God giveth thee for an inheritance. So anyone who is hung on a tree is cast. Why? Because that tree 
it is a picture or is the source of a curse. It is an, a picture of the devil. It is a picture of Satan possessing that tree. Which tree? People ate the fruit of that tree, basically eating the seed of Satan. And that tree is a picture of a curse. Satan brought that curse to humanity. But we got that uh, curse by eating from the fruit. And Jesus himself he was hung on a tree. Why? So that he could take our curse. He could take all the curse that we were given into himself, unto himself, okay? That's why, let me show you. In the book of Galatians 3.13, Galatians 3.13, it tells us about that. Galatians 3.13, it says, mm, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Jesus himself, he was hung on a tree. So he took our curses. He took all the curses upon us, uh, which was upon us into himself. And now he made us new creatures. He made us new unto him. And now we will not die if we believe in Jesus Christ. Now let's continue. So those who refuse God's redemption plan through Jesus' blood, they are called the children of disobedience, the children of Satan, the children of disobedience. Satan disobeyed God in heaven. So you are a child of disobedience, a child of Satan. If you refuse the redemption plan that God has set forth for you to be saved. In the book of Ephesians 2, from verse 2 uh, to 3, it says, Ephesians 2, 2 to 3, it says, uh, wearing in time past, you walk according to the course of this world. Back then, you walk according to the course of this uh, uh, world, according to the prince of the power of the year. You remember what the Bible says? We don't uh, battle against, you know, normal things. We battle against principalities in the air, in the heavenly places, meaning Satan there, up there in the second heaven. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now, why are they called the children of disobedience? Because they're the children of Satan, among whom we all had our conversation in time past in the last of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. Back then, we were children of wrath. We were destined to wrath. We were destined to failure. We were destined to dying. But God had mercy on us. He said, okay, you have the seed of Satan, but I'm going to do something different in your lives. I'm going to change you. I'm going to make you a new. I'm going to give you a new redemption plan. And this plan, if you follow this plan, you're going to be saved, okay? So unsaved persons still carry the seed of Satan, the seed of disobedience in them. Now, one of the uh, signs of a seed of disobedience is deception, because deception, Satan was a deceiver from the beginning. Remember, he won Adam and Eve out of deception. He lied to them. He did not threaten them. He lied to them. And the same we are seeing also happening right now in our churches lately. There's a lot of deception, a lot of people who have a lot of deception. They lie to people so much for gain. Others, they lie to control people. Others, they lie. Even politicians, they are lying. People are lying, lying, lying. And this is a seed of the master deceiver, Satan. Now, when you see somebody lying so much, and these characters which are written here in the Bible, then know that is a child of disobedience. A good example in Ephesians 5, 6. Ephesians 5, 6, let me show you a good example of children of disobedience. Ephesians 5, 6, 6 it says, let no man deceive you with vain words. Have you heard people deceiving with vain words? For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So don't let anyone deceive you with vain words. Have you seen people in church, they are giving you vain words? No, just forget about the blood of Jesus. This is how you can be saved. Just give to the poor. Others they say, no, 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 forget the blood of Jesus. Just be a good man. Just, uh, you know, come to Sunday uh, church every Sunday. Just say, uh, be baptized and you'll be saved. They, they lie to you. They give you some lies. That's the seed of Satan, the seed of deception. All right. Something else, Romans 16, 18, 16, 18, Romans 16, 18. And today's message will be quite uh, short. It won't be that long. 
uh, Romans 16, 18, it says, for they that are such, uh, for they that are such, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Do you know there are people who serve their own belly? They lie to you because they want the money, because they want this, because they want that. They're really just looking. If I tell these people, God has told me that uh, I need 10 people here giving 50,000 each. Uh, they will give me the money. And because they trust in me, they will give me the money. And when they give me, I'll feed my belly. Are you seeing such kind of people? Others, they say, uh, God told me that uh, you need to sell your house and give it to me. There are pastors who are like that. They serve their own belly because they are children of who? Disobedience. They are liars. Are you seeing that? So love God as a child loves his father. Don't love God with, you know, wisdom and using all craftiness. You see, there are people who say, for you to be able to love God, you must be there are some things that you need to, you know, you need to do. It's like they're using some terminologies and they're using great words and they're really making you feel as if this Christianity is so complicated. No, Christianity is not complicated. These people, they try to complicate it so much so that you cannot understand because they are master deceivers. They are of their father, the devil, who is trying to deceive people so much. Let me show you. 1 Corinthians 3, 18, concerning this, 1 Corinthians 3, 18, it tells us about this kind of lies, okay? Wisdom, using some wisdom, uh, 3, 18, 1 Corinthians. Um, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Why is the Bible telling us to become fools? Because... The wisdom of this world is, is nothing unto God. It's just fake. God does not want us to use the wisdom of this world in his things. He wants us to come to him with the innocence that a child has. A child just believes. His father tells him, trust me, just jump. Jump and I'll hold you. And a child will jump because they trust their father. But look at us. You will be told by God, jump here. You start calculating. You see, uh, God, uh, this, uh, there's a theory which was given. The gravity says this and that. You know, I can't jump because of this and this. And, and you will give God so many excuses out of the wisdom of this world. And it tells, tells you, forget the whole wisdom. Just jump. I, can, I will hold you. I will hold you. Just like a child is convinced that the father will take care of him. That is the kind of thing that God wants us to have. The kind of trust that we need to come to God with. Don't come to God with a lot of wisdom, a lot of thoughts, so many things that you want to do to yourself. No, don't come to God like that. Come to God the, exactly the same way he told you, by faith, okay? And uh, we also see there's a lot of false doctrine, which is also deceives people. And that one shows that in church, there is also the seed of disobedience, okay? Ephesians 4.14, it tells us that we henceforth be no more children. The Bible is telling us, do not be children in the word of God, you know? He is told us, of course, trust like children, but do not be children. Children are people who are tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning and craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Don't be like trusting everybody out there. Trust God is your father. A child will trust everyone out there. Be it a neighbor, be it a stranger, whoever you tell him, come in, I, I want to give you a sweet. You're running, oh, it's okay. He's telling us, don't be like children, but to God himself, behave like a child. <laughs> because you're a child of God, but to other people, don't be like children. Be wise, be wise and know that the only person that I'm supposed to stay, be like a child is my God. Because I don't want to be tossed to and fro and I have the words and the, the, the knowledge of, you know, um, of this world, which is going to lead me astray. So how can we have the wisdom of God? As I wind up, how can we have the wisdom of God? It is through faith on what he commanded us. He told us to do his work, okay? Now, this is not works because we are not saved by works. Let me show you what kind of work are we supposed to do so that we can become children of God. John, 
6.29, the Bible tells us what kind of work we are to do. John 6.29, it tells us, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. The whole work of God is just to believe in him whom he has sent. God says, don't do any other work. I already did every other thing. Just the only work that I want you to do is believe. That's the only work that I want you to do. Believe in whom God sent. That is Jesus Christ. So how are you going to believe in Jesus Christ? You believe in him. There's a small formula of how you're going to believe in Jesus. Ephesians 1, uh, 13, it tells us, in whom you trusted after that you had the... Uh, let me just read for you so that I read you the clear words. Huh? Ephesians 1, uh, 13, it says, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. So you have to trust after you hear, trusting after you hear. You trust after you hear what? The word of truth. What is that word of truth? The gospel of your salvation. In whom you believed you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, who is the earnest of our inheritance, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory. So now the moment we believe, we hear the gospel, you hear the gospel and then you believe it, then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, who is the earnest of our inheritance and to the praise of his glory. So what is that gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I don't want to repeat this too much because I've explained the gospel so many other times. You can check my other videos. But it's all about how Christ died. How did Jesus die? He shed his blood at the cross. Why was the blood important? Because the book of Leviticus 17, 11 tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when we take the blood out, we have killed that uh, creature. And why is death important? Because the wages of sin is death. Whosoever sins, he must die. So now if I have to remove my blood to die, then it means, will I be saved? No. Why? Because I am a sinner. My blood has the seed of Satan in it. And if there have to be pure blood, which is going to clean me up. And if that blood is shed for me, then I'll be cleaned up and I'll go to heaven. That's why the Bible says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus is clean. He has no sin. He's never sinned once in his life. So his blood is, is clean. He does not have the seed of the enemy inside him. So when that blood is shed for me and I trust it, it's like I'm doing a blood transfusion into myself. I've removed my own blood and I've put the blood of Jesus. Now I am clean and I can face God in heaven because I am a clean person. Have you understood? So when you understand that, how Christ died, that he died for your sins and you trust in that, my brother, my sister, you have gotten saved. And the Holy Spirit has gotten inside you. That nanosecond that you believe has gotten inside you and has made you a new creature. So I hope you've been able to be blessed. Today's message was really uh, not that long. It was all talking about what exactly was in that tree of knowledge of good and evil. And of course, if you have not been here, just go back and read especially go and check in the book of Ezekiel 31 from verse 4 all the way down. You'll be able to see that tree of life. I mean, that tree of knowledge of good and evil, it was possessed by Satan. And that, the same way Satan possesses people, he possesses things, he possesses this and that, he was in that tree. And like we have read, and the fruits of that tree had the seed of Satan in him. So when Adam and Eve, they ate of that tree, then what happened? It was done. They took the seed of Satan in them. And the only way to change that is if you take the seed of God and you neutralize that. And because God is more powerful, he kicks out this. And that is only through the blood of Jesus Christ. So guys, be blessed. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to this uh, channel. You can be able to watch much, much, much more. The other videos that I've done as well, which can be of help to you. You can also share the same video so that others people, uh, other people can also be blessed. Okay, see you next time, same time, same place.